I'm Matt Mitchell from Crypto Harlem in New York, USA. Crypto Harlem is a meeting every month in northern Manhattan, predominantly African-American region of Manhattan, New York City, where we teach circumvention tools to the community. People who live in Harlem are surveilled from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to sleep. Uh, your average person in Harlem lives in like um, affordable housing or public housing, and uh, there's a huge concentration of CCTV cameras but only in this community. There's a huge concentration of automatic license plate readers, but only in this community. There's a huge collection of uh, um, shot spotters, which are microphones on top of buildings that will help trace the directory of uh, potential gunshot sounds, but only in this community. So you have many layers of surveillance followed by police on the street and this thing called um, omnipresence, which allows 24-7 uh, floodlights to be gas generated, broadcast into the buildings into the community, uh, you have uh, police towers that are automated robot towers by FLIR with the heat sensing technology on it. So people ask questions, they wonder, like, this isn't normal, I've gone downtown and midtown, I don't see this stuff. Now normally they will say, this is for public safety, we're monitoring this area. But if you look at the statistics, uh, in New York City we have this thing, it's CompStat system, and you can actually look at yesterday's crime results, it's so fast, it's all electronic, and uh, recently they opened up the data. This data and additional data that takes time to process is what it's used to track like crime rates in New York City. And crime is at an all time low in New York City, but surveillance is at an all time high. And it's not because of surveillance that the crime has stopped, it's just other things, right? Because we see an all time citywide drop in crime, but a inner city increase in surveillance. Uh, your average surveillance company has demilitarized technology that they need to push into the private sector, but they can't do that without statistics. So they'll go to a place like New York City and say, or Newark, New Jersey, yeah, you can, we'll roll out our shot stopper or whatever, or whatever technology will su subsidize the cost of implementation so we can get some data, we'll share the data with you. Fighting this um, is something that Crypto Harlem's all about. Uh, the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, has a thing called the CCOPS, which stands for Community Control Over Police Surveillance. And you know, we, there's a lot of surveillance that you know we didn't know about, like you know, stingrays, uh, which is a popular term for cell site simulators. Knowledge about them is just accidental. Uh, learning about cameras inside light bulbs that are being deployed in New York City is just completely accidental. Learning about um, x-ray vans, which are police that use like vax matter radiation to see through walls, it's all accidental. So everyone in the United States is being passively surveilled. We know that because of Edward Snowden, um, the work of like a lot of journalists for your request and ACLU, etc. In this case, it's very active and very real. It's an adversary who you make eye contact with and see on a daily basis. Um, and it's a completely different environment when you're doing that. When I teach GPG, the first thing that people are amazed by is now they have a way that they can encrypt their data for themselves, right? Outside of email, they're thinking, I can use this like public key encryption to secure notes and photos and video. Whether it's of friends and family or contacts, if there's a picture of you with someone who you grew up with, who took a different turn in their life, that gets an, that's enough for you to face a gang conspiracy charge. Encrypting that is a huge defense to people. They don't need to buy something. They don't need to install something. They just always have it, and it's always going to work for them. And that's very strong and so important. Um, then when you throw an email, which gets subpoenaed and pulled and used against people, you know when you look at um, years and years of your email, because when people are surveilled in Harlem. For, and, and they're facing gang conspiracy charges or this other thing called nuisance abatement charges. There's a, enough of your social media or enough of your email could be made to paint you to look any particular way. You know, you said this at this time, you said this at that time. Presented to the jury with all your emails next to each other can make you look any kind of way. So it's so important to encrypt that information and GPG affords people that. I know an example of a youth who writes, was writing direct messages on Facebook with their friends and switched to GPG, right? Writing encrypted messaging, which now also took them out of writing unsafe messaging with other people who didn't want to learn it. And um, some of the people they communicated with were pulled in on gang conspiracy charges. So whether th that person's messages couldn't be read, save them, or the fact that they only communicate with people who use, who have key is therefore a safer group, save them. They weren't all rounded up in a gang conspiracy charge.